let's take a look at texture displacement in the node editor. Uh, we'll go ahead and use this character here. It's just a little spider character and we'll move the camera over to the tail and we'll focus on this section of the the character for texturing. Uh, before we move into the node editor, let's take a look at uh, working in the layer system so we can see what we're trying to accomplish in the node editor. I'm going to open up a quick window of F prime just so that we can uh, see what we're what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to open up the surface editor and the surface here is called skin base so we'll move over to texture editor and for layer type let's just use a procedural texture we'll change it to honeycomb in the Y and we'll just shrink it down. Okay, so we've got this honeycomb pattern, but it's a little too perfect. And that's where texture displacement comes in. If we want to, we can add another procedural layer right here, turbulence. Let's move it below the honeycomb. So it needs to be beneath this layer. And for blending mode, we're going to change it from normal to texture displacement. And what that does is it displaces that honeycomb pattern and makes it a little more natural, a little less perfect. Okay, so how do we do this in the node editor? Well, it's pretty simple. Let's take a look. I don't need to, to close this out just because when I activate the node editor and plug into the color channel, it's going to override. Just remember that the node editor overrides what's going on in that channel for each channel that I plug into. Okay, so let's, let's recreate this. Let's make it something similar. So we'll go to add node, 3D texture, honeycomb, and I'm going to plug that into the color channel. Now, because I did that, it automatically overrides what's in the color channel in the texture editor. Double click. We're going to need to size this one down as well. And we're going to change the axis to Y. And let's just size this down. 0.25. And we'll go with that. So we've got a, a much smaller pattern than we had before. And uh, now we just need to, to displace it. But I could take a look here in my blending modes but I'm not really seeing a displace for whenever I use the next node so we go about it slightly different I'm gonna set this over here and let's put for uh, for add node we'll go to 3d texture let's use turbulence like we did before and we'll plug the color let's just say into the position okay and it starts waving this around if I want to tone that down a bit I can open up the properties for this. I'm going to change the opacity. Let's do 50% and let's change the scale. I'm going to go 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 just to bring it down. Okay, so now we're displacing the, the texture similar to what we did in the, the texture editor. So if you want to displace uh, a procedural texture or a texture, you can just plug right into scale, position, rotation, fall off. You can do that right there instead of um, using the layer system. Now while we're in here, why don't we go ahead and work with this a little bit more. And I'm going to take advantage of a weight map that's on the character. Let's go take a look. So in Modeler, we've got the character. Let's go over to Weight Shade and we'll choose this tail. So I've, I've created a weight map just on the tail that's really strong in the center and then fades out along the sides. Okay, we'll take advantage of that just to dress this texture up and take a look at some more features in the node editor. So I'm going to move over to add node, vertex map, weight map, double click, and let's choose the tail weight map that I just showed. And we'll plug that into opacity. And that's going to limit where it puts the texture. See, it's much stronger where the higher weight map value is, and then it fades off uh, to nothing where there was no weight map. Okay, and we can also take this, if we wanted to use this in the bump, so no longer in the, the color and just in the bump, right now what it's doing is it's, it is taking advantage of the layer system. So I'm just going to go, instead of removing it, I'm just going to go turn those off. Okay, Because remember, if you have something in the texture editor out here in this channel, it will you can blend both the node editor channels and the layer system channels. It's just if there's anything plugged into a channel in the node editor, it overrides what's going on in the texture editor. So now I've got just the bump there. But how come this weight map isn't working with opacity? Well, in order for it to work with opacity, we uh, with the, the bump, we actually need to use bump amp. So by plugging that in, we get the bump where the higher values are, and it fades to zero here. Okay. Let's just do a, let's dress this up a little bit more 
and then we'll uh, we'll call it done. Uh, we've already covered the texture displacement, but why not take a look at some more stuff? I'm going to use a, a gradient. Let's color this up. So I'm going to go over to gradient. I'm adding a gradient node. I'm going to plug that into color, and then let's um, let's use the honeycomb. Let's use this bump as the input. Okay. Double click. Let's add a red key here. And as you can see, the higher values, right, the, the closer we get to one, the higher the value of the bump, the it's going to use red. And then it, as it gets lower to zero, it's going to go black. Okay. So using the same setup that we already had. Now, what I can also do is instead of it being just black there, let's take this key and let's show output. I'm going to close that down. And now on my node, I've got some more input channels. So I'm going to use the, the color channel here. Let's go to add node, 3D texture, and let's use crackle. I'm going to plug crackle into the key one color. And so now where it was black, it's using this crackle texture here, except I don't want it everywhere. It's now put it everywhere on the, the surface. So I'm just going to use the same weight map and plug that into opacity and we end up with the crackle surface on key one of this gradient fading off to black so we're, we're back to to where we started with the surface except for the tail that we've dressed up the tail so this is just a quick look the main thing i wanted to show was using texture displacement which is what's going on here this turbulent texture is displacing the honeycomb texture which gives us a much more natural pattern than that hard edge pattern uh, especially on something like this like an or organic character and then we're using uh, this flow not just for bump we're feeding the color channel up into the gradient to control how it's going to place the gradient on the surface and then for key one of the gradient which was zero or the black key uh, we're using the crackle texture to drive the, the texture here to give us this look so quick look at texture displacement and a few other options in the node editor